What is up guys? We are back with another video and today we're checking out another BIOS and this is the BIOS for the MSI Meg Z690 Ace. Now, as I always say, this BIOS should be pretty much the same across all of MSI's Z690 motherboards. Obviously, the color and look of the BIOS might be a little bit different depending on which board you have, but the overall structure and everything should be pretty much the same. Now, if you're wondering, how do I get into the BIOS? Like, how do I get to the screen when I turn my system on? All you have to do is power your system on and then keep on hitting the delete key, not the backspace key, the delete key on your keyboard. Just keep on hitting it and you'll be dropped right here into the BIOS. And this is MSI's Click BIOS 5, which they have been using for the past few generations. So the overall look of the BIOS should be the same if you're like two generations behind or something like that. Um, and this is, you know, you're upgrading to a new system. The look of the BIOS should be pretty much the same. So when you are dropping into the BIOS, you are dropped into easy mode here. And this kind of gives you a lot of settings that you just want to set really quickly, you know, like your first time setup and all of that. Um, so here we have our CPU speed and our memory speed right here. Um, we have some temperature, CPU temperature, motherboard temperature, vCore, uh, voltage, and the BIOS mode that we're in. Um, we can see our motherboard, which is of course the Meg Z690 Ace, our CPU, our memory size, BIOS version, and BIOS build date. Below that, we do have our BIOS priority. So this is what drive's gonna boot first. Um, you can easily drag and drop these. So if you want it to boot to a certain device first, you can just, again, drag and drop. Super easy to do that. Over here, we have our Eki profile and it is enabled, um, but by default, it's not. So it would look like that. And then all you have to do to enable it is just click here. And when it's red, that means that your XMP profile is enabled. Over here is Game Boost. Um, you can turn that on or off um, just by clicking and it will turn your Game Boost on or off. Um, it is off by default. And then we have some just information here. So we have all of these tabs. The first one is CPU. Gives you just all of the information on your CPU and all that kind of stuff. Memory, same thing. We can see we have two crucial DDR5 DIMMs in here. You know, all of that, 32 gigabytes. The XMP profile, even temperatures are all kind of right here. Storage, um, we can see that we have one drive installed and it's our Samsung uh, SSD right here, 870, even though the zero is missing, but it's Samsung 870 right there. Fan info, um, this is pretty cool. So this gives you a view of your CPU fan in the fan curve that it's running. Um, and then you can see the, the pump fan as well. Um, this does have a pump header on it. So if you are using an AIO, you can connect to the pump header instead of the fan header. Um, and then you can configure these, which I will show you. And then over here, you have your system fans. Um, we don't have any fans connected, but you could view all of their stuff here as well. Um, and then if you do go into the settings here, this brings up your hardware monitor, which is a really cool um, thing where you can, again, you can see all of your fan curves. You can change your fan curves. Th this has um, temperature sensor uh, uh, probes that come with the motherboard. We don't have them connected, but you could see those here as well. Um, you could see, you know, just a bunch of stuff all in real time. You know, you can see again, everything like, you know, we're graphing the CPU temperature in real time right here, as you can see. Um, you know, stuff here, you have fan controls, all of your voltages, it's all really nice um, right here. So you can kind of see everything that's really going on in your system. Um, we'll go ahead and close that out. And then we just have help, which basically just gives you all of your shortcuts. If you're looking to, you know, see what something does or like F6 is optimized defaults. Um, of course, F7 will, will toggle between uh, this mode, which is easy mode and advanced mode, um, you know, has it all right there. We also have some tools down here. So we have M-Flash. Um, basically, this allows you to flash your BIOS. If you do click it, it will restart the system in flash mode. Um, so basically, you plug in your USB drive that has your BIOS on it. You hit yes, and then it will restart, and it will read it. Uh, it's really easy to do there. 
We have favorites. We don't have anything added to our favorites, but you can add a favorite right here. And then again, we have hardware monitor, which I did just bring up, um, which has, you know, everything that we just showed you. We also have some, you know, basically like on and off switches, CPU, CPU fail warning control. Um, you can turn this on or off. Thunderbolt control, you can turn this on or off. Uh, debug LED control. So if you want the debug LED off for some reason, you can turn it off here. FTPM 2.0. So for Windows 11, this is enabled by default, but this is how easy it is to enable TPM for installing Windows 11 right here. Um, turn RAID on or off and then easy LED control. Now there's actually no RGB LEDs on this board, but for some reason, if you connected like a something to one of the RGB headers, you can turn all of them on or off with this control right here. Um, you can take a screenshot with F12. Um, there is this, which allows you to remap the smart button on the board, which is the reset button. Um, you can change that. It's by default, it's set to reset. You can change it to mystic light on or off, safe boot and turbo fan. And then we actually have a search, which is pretty cool. So if you're looking for a certain setting, you're like, where is the setting? I can't find it. Um, there's actually a search and you can type in, let's say we want to change our XMP profile. Boom, and it comes up. Um, pretty awesome that there is a search built into the BIOS here. And then you can of course change your language. We're gonna jump into advanced mode. Um, all you have to do is either click up here or hit F7 on your keyboard. And now we're dropped into advanced mode and it still kind of has this sort of like easy mode look with our different settings and tabs. Um, in the settings, this is basically everything to do with the board minus your overclocking settings. So system status, again, you can just see everything that's kind of going on on the board and all of that. Um, under advanced, you have PCI subsystem settings, um, all of your different link speeds and all of that, uh, your PCIe ASPM settings, all of this. Integrated peripherals, um, again, VGA detection on or off. Your onboard LAN controllers, you can turn those on or off. Your SATA configuration, you can turn all of those on or off. Um, HD audio controller, again, everything kind of that's part of the chipset is right in here. Um, RAID configuration, you can jump into as well. Integrated graphics, um, again, you can set this up if you're running integrated graphics on your CPU. Uh, Intel Thunderbolt, um, PCIe tunneling over USB 4, that is enabled by default. Discrete Thunderbolt support is disabled by default, um, so you might wanna go ahead and change that. USB configuration, again, um, you can turn on USB, your legacy USB support, and then every port on, every port and header on the board, you can enable or disable if you want to. Power management, uh, this is like, you know, uh, ERP mode and all that stuff, uh, USB standbys if you want to, uh, you can set all that up right here. Uh, BIOS CS, CSM or UEFI mode, it should be a UEFI by default. Wake up event setup, so you can, you know, set up wake events by USB device, uh, different things if you want to. Secure erase, um, this allows you to, of course, secure erase a M.25. Um, you know, you can click it and then it will delete, uh, you know, stuff on your drive. And then there is an NVMe SSD self test as well. Um, you can go ahead and run that if you want to. That is everything in advanced. Boot, um, this gives you your boot options like full logo display, all that kind of stuff, fast boot, you know, and then you have your boot options here as well. And again, you can change them up here which is much easier if you want to, um, but you have all that right here. And then you have your disk priorities as well. Security, this allows you to set an administrator password, user password. Um, you can go into, you know, trusted computing settings. But again, this is all set up by that easy mode on the front. You don't have to change this, um, but you can set all this up if you want to. Uh, chassis intrusion configuration, you can set that up if you'd like. Secure boots, again, you can set up secure boot, key management, all that kind of stuff, you can do that. And then of course we have save and exit. Um, this allows you to easily save all your changes, uh, restore defaults, which I like to see. And of course we do have the boot override in there. So again, if you're installing Windows from a flash drive, which you should be, um, you can boot from 
you know, the flash drive first and then you don't have to change your boot priority or anything like that. So that is everything sort of like in the settings menu. Now I know a lot of you want to go into the OC settings. Um, and this is where you're gonna do all of your overclocking settings, all the settings to do with your CPU and everything like that. Now, there are different modes that you can do, normal and expert. It is set to expert by default, which I actually like. Um, so for overclocking a 12th gen chip, uh, we can do all core overclock or we can do turbo ratio. So you can set uh, you know, your turbo, turbo ratios or you can actually do a turbo ratio offset, which might be a different way to overclock if you wanted to do something like that. Or you can just do it per core and you can set which each core kind of goes to. You can do that with both the P cores and E cores on, um, on, this, you know, on this board, obviously. Um, it's CPU configuration. This is all of your different settings for the CPU. So, you know, Turbo Boost 3.0 is enabled, EIST is enabled. Um, all of your power limits are in, in here as well. They're set to like their highest setting. So you really don't have to change these. Um, I think on like Gigabyte BIOSes, you really have to change these. But for this BIOS, even on auto, it's like set to the highest setting. Um, over temperature protections, all that kind of stuff. TVB points, um, you can set these as well. And again, everything to do with the CPU, you can enable or disable cores, um, you know, per core hyper threading, of course, you can change that. Um, if you want to disable like the E cores, if you're just going for a full P core overclock, you can disable all the E cores. All that stuff for the CPU is right in there. AVX controls, ring ratio, GT ratio, CPU cooler uh, tuning, you can change that as well. I mean, which, what's nice about this too is if you're not sure what a setting is, you can see how I hover over it. And over on the help section, it gives you information about what the specific setting is, which is really nice to see. Um, BCLK settings, again, you can change all of that. Um, and then DRAM settings, of course, we can enable or disable our XMP profile very easily. Um, DRAM reference clock, all your stuff with your memory is right here. Um, and again, if you wanted to do like an overclock on your memory, you can just set the XMP profile and then change the DRAM frequency if you want. Um, DRAM timing mode, advanced DRAM configuration. Again, this is where you can change all of like your sub timings and all that kind of stuff to do with your memory you can do right in here. Um, and then you have your voltage settings. So you have, you have all your voltage settings right in here. You can change all your voltages, but you can also go into digital all power. And this is your load line calibrations. And again, it shows you over here what these load line calibrations do, but you can set all of your uh, kind of power settings right in here. And then of course, all of your voltages. And then you have other settings like CPU memory channel detect, um, you know, CPU specifications, we can see all the specs of our CPU and all of like, you know, what it supports and, and all of that. Memory Z, um, this gives you, you know, information on the memory that you're running, of course, and the XMP uh, information as well. And then we just have CPU features and you can enable or disable certain CPU features there as well. So everything really is in this overclocking setting. It does seem a little, daunting at first, but all the settings are pretty easy to find, I would say. Um, so that's everything that is right here in the OC mode. There is also M flash, which again brings, uh, if you click it, it will bring up the uh, prompt to restart to flash. And then over here, if I go, okay, here we go. We also have OC profile. Um, this allows you to save and load overclocking profiles if you want. Of course, we have that hardware monitor, which I said, uh, brings up this nice looking hardware monitor. And then we have a beta runner, which I guess is just like, it has the NVMe self-test in it. Um, that's basically <laughs> all that's in it. Um, but yeah, that's that's basically it for the advanced mode of the BIOS. It's everything's in there, it's easy to find. Um, and again, you have all of like your help and info on this side as well. So you can kind of see what all these settings mean. Um, but the BIOS, again, 
this BIOS has not changed all that much in the past few generations. Let's go back to easy mode. Um, and I really like it. They, they have certain things like you can just en enable really quickly, like TPM and, and things like that, um, that make it easy for a first time user to kind of go in here. You know, you click here to enable your XMP profile. Um, TPM is enabled by default, but if it wasn't, you could t turn that on. And then you're pretty much like, you know, you could set your boot priority as well. And then you're pretty much good to install Windows. Um, so yeah, so if you guys do have any questions about this BIOS or about a Z690 MSI BIOS, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. And I would appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up if you did get anything out of this video. We'll see you guys in the next one.